Okay, welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Matt and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to install Ubuntu in VirtualBox. Uh, this, I'm on Linux right now as my main computer, as my main host, but this should work in Mac and Windows as well, basically the same. So, first we'll talk about prerequisites. And these are things that I'm not going to cover in the video, so you should have to know how to do these. First thing you'll need to do is download an ISO. Specifically, if we're going to do Ubuntu, you'd want to do the latest Ubuntu ISO or the, or the LTS, whichever one you choose to uh, install. You'll need to have VirtualBox installed, obviously. It's very easily. It's in the Ubuntu repos. It's in the main arch repository, pretty much any repository. I'm pretty sure there's a snap or a flat pack of it, but I might be wrong about that. I'm not sure. Um, I don't use snaps or flat packs. It's pronounced A U R. <laughs> um, and the big one is you'll have to have virtualization technology enabled on your motherboard. Uh, again, this is something that I'm not going to cover in this video, uh, mainly because it's different for every motherboard. So you'll have to find out what motherboard or computer you have and then do a Google search on how to enable virtualization technology on your particular motherboard. Because, like I said, it's different for every motherboard and every CPU combination. Uh, I'm on a Ryzen system. It was just a checkbox in the checks a checkbox in the BIOS, so it wasn't that hard. It, it was just something that you have to do. Otherwise, it won't work. All right. So the first thing you want to do is open up VirtualBox, which I've already done. I have that here. Um, unfortunately, I can't make this any bigger. So you'll just have to make this full screen or something so you can see the things. So the first thing you want to do is. Uh, click machine and then new and you'll want to then name the virtual machine you're creating so I already have one called Ubuntu 2010 I'm just gonna call this Ubuntu 2 and then you'll wanna chances are you'll probably just wanna keep this machine folder as the default you wanna select Linux from the drop down here and then the version of uh, Linux that you're installing so uh, a lot of times it will do this automatically. See, it's already chosen Ubuntu. Make sure you choose the right bit type for it. Chances are it's going to be 64-bit. Uh, Ubuntu doesn't supply 32-bit uh, ISOs anymore, so 64-bit is the one you want to choose. And then check next. Uh, this next one is memory size. Now, 1 gigabyte, which is 1,024 megabytes, uh, is never usually enough. So you can either double that. I usually give it close to six because uh, I have 64 gigabytes on this machine so six is just a uh, you know, 10% and then check check next again uh, the next thing you'll want to do is uh, check create virtual hard disk hard disk now so this this one here it's the default selection do you just leave that hit next or create the next one you want to ch check is um, uh, VHD is the one that you want here um, and then you want to make sure dynamically allocated is is selected this basically just means uh, that it will dynamically allocate the hard disk file size um, so it doesn't take up your whole hard drive um, and then here's where you choose how big your hard drive is going to be your virtual hard drive is going to be uh, 10 gigabytes is not really enough so I usually choose around between 20 and 25 just you know in the middle it doesn't really matter and then hit create and you've created your virtual now there's some things you still have to do so the next thing is you'll want to go through here and right click and hit settings and uh, let's see if I can get this down here in the center of the alright um, the first thing you want to do is go to oh, I can't remember the next one All right, so you want to Make sure you've got, your processor has more than one core. So I always put two. That should be fine. Uh, the next one is you'll want to go down here, user interface, and make sure that show in full screen mode is unchecked. Um, and then you also want to go here to display and make sure that the uh, video memory is cranked all the way up. And then. Uh, to install first, you have to go to storage, 
click empty, and then click this uh, blue uh, CD looking thing over here, and then ch click create, choose or create virtual disc, optical disc, and that's just going to take you to a file browser. You hit the ISO that you downloaded, hit choose, and you see now this here, right here instead of saying empty, it has the name of the ISO that you downloaded, and hit OK. Okay, now you're ready to go through and hit start. Okay, and then you'll get here, you'll, um, you just go ahead and start there again, and then it will boot into the live CD, and you're ready to install Ubuntu. See if I can make this, it's not going to go full screen until it's into the live disk. And it may not do it until you've installed guest as well, which I may not, may or may not, not go through uh, at this time. I might do a different video on that. Okay, so let's see if uh, oh, F. Yeah, here we go. Uh, this is the full screen, as, or as good as full screen as, as you're going to get at this point. I guess. I guess. Uh, anyways, this is just a regular. Ubuntu install. So if you've installed Ubuntu before, you just you know make sure your yep your keyboard works. Uh, I always uncheck the updates because I always do the updates afterwards because it never does all the updates. And then you but you do click this one and you can choose between normal and minimal. Uh, continue. And this will take a couple minutes. Sometimes depends on how big the disk you made is. Um, you erase disk list. When I did this the first time, I had an error. So let's see if this does an error again. Oh, no. Oh, yep. Now, um, I'm not sure what this error a actually does or reason for it, but you just hit OK. Um, and I'm going to have to get out of full screen here. Uh, or I guess I can't get out of full screen here. Um, we'll do, I guess we'll have to. That error there came up the first, and, and you just have to restart the VM, which is not letting me do because I'm full screen. I shouldn't have went full screen. All right, well, you know what? Oh, there we go. Just power that off. All right, so if it does, if the error, if that happens to you. Uh, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure what that error means. I think just, if I remember right, just restarting it worked fine. I feel, I feel like there's a step I'm missing <laughs> that I used to fix this. That way we're not in full screen anymore. There might have been a setting I missed. I do believe I don't know how to do this, but <laughs> actually, you know, the th thing I think I ch changed the last time to fix this was giving it more cores. So I'm not sure why. All right, let's give this a try again. Oops, hit the back button instead of forward. Try again. See if that error comes back up again. If it does, then we'll I'll pause the recording and see what I can do. Install now. Continue. Haha. <laughs> see, just restarting it worked. Okay. Continue. And then you just type in your usual name. Oh, I'm Matthew Over. I leave the computer name the same. Okay, and continue, and then it's going to install Ubuntu. Now this takes um, anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes, usually. Sometimes it's quicker than that, sometimes it's a little slower. It depends on how many cores you allocated it, and whether or not you're running on a solid-state drive. All sorts of things play into the time of this, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out the video here, and when we come back, 
uh, Ubuntu will be installed. Okay. And Ubuntu has been installed, so all you have to do now is just hit restart, and it will restart. You just go now. Then here's where things change from normal. So I hardly ever remove the installation medium when I'm actually starting on, actually installing on actual you know hardware. But in a virtual machine, you have to do that. So you have to shut the machine down. So go up here and hit. Um, Uh, I ain't close. And, and then, okay. And then you have to go back over here to your m machine, hit settings and storage, and make where it says, uh, make sure I, I did the right one. Yeah, I did the right one. All right. Storage. All right. So in yours, very likely, I don't know why mine's not showing it, but this won't say empty anymore. It'll still have the Ubuntu ISO attached you'll just have to go over here and make sure you hit uh, not make make sure you remove it okay um, and then just hit okay so now that that's done I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to install the guest edition so that you can make it full screen and it'll actually work now this works way better if you're not in a tiling window manager to begin with um, so mine's gonna be look a little wonky but just deal, you know, yours will probably look a little bit different, but I'll show you how to do how to do that very quickly. It's easy. So wait for Ubuntu here to start up. And then you enter your password. And Ubuntu is going to start up for the first time. And I'm just going to skip next next done. Okay, so then you want to open up a terminal. Okay, and you're gonna to want to type in. Uh, first, you're gonna to want to make sure your computer, your system's up to date. Uh, I already did that. So you'll want to do sudo apt install dash y. That just means it won't ask you to confirm. Uh, DKMS and build essential and Linux oops Linux headers version and then enter your password oops that's obviously not the right one I did that again one of these days I'm gonna to remember to do write this down before I just and that website's completely unreadable. Okay. Alright, here we go. Sorry about that. So we just go back here, Linux dash headers, uh, and then the dollar sign slash uh, uname dash r and that's just going to uh, replace that with the version of the Linux headers that you need for your specific kernel I forgot I always forget to do that that is not the version version doesn't do that it's, that's dumb Matt so it just goes through and in installs this stuff um these are just prerequisite or um, dependencies that you'll need for the guest editions. Now, what guest editions do is they allow you to basically make it sure your clipboard works between your virtual machine and your regular machine, your mouse works between your virtual machine and your regular machine, and it also uh, allows you to go full screen and change the um, change the resolution. So, to do that, you want to go up here to the uh, menu and click devices then insert guest edition CD image and if you've did the dependencies already you'll get this little pop-up and you'll just hit run it'll ask you for your password and then it will go through and do this now this will take a couple minutes uh, I think I 
I'll probably cut this part out here as well. There's no sense in you having to sit here and wait through all this. I mean, you could just go through and get to the end. Oh, when here's the end. Maybe I won't cut it out. It didn't take that long after all. You just hit return. All right, now the next thing you want to do is shut down your machine again. And I do it. I'm just going to do it this way. It's just, just as easy. All right, and then you want to go to here and hit settings and general and advanced and do both of these here share clipboard and drag and drop you want to use bi-directional that just means you can go through and use your clipboard in your virtual machine and it will be copied to your system clipboard and vice versa okay and then you just hit start again now if you remember to turn off your little menu there at the bottom uh, when once you're logged in you should be able to go full screen and you won't have these huge you know gray bars along the side and we'll see if I'm being a liar or if it actually works so in order to go full screen once this loads up you hit right control and F and there you go full screen and you have them boot to install and you know things are working here you know the internet should be working your email, whatever you need to use. Um, like it's uh, the most simple way to install a virtual machine. And that's it. So I want to thank you for uh, watching this video today. If you really liked it, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Maybe the notifi notification icon if you're interested in seeing more tutorials, podcasts, and uh, ranting and rantings and ravings from me. Uh, give those buttons a smash. I mean, that's what a YouTuber says, right? Smash the like button. That's... I wonder how many people have actually broken their screens by smashing the like button. Anyways, I'll see you next time.